that drum set that you have there, I'm going to give that three years. Well, Caitlin Ramsey came to me and said, I think we need to replace the drum set. So we've got a few added expenses in, in equipment, which, uh, but we've also got some reductions. Like in Phys Ed, that's down over $1,000 because our equipment room for the winter fitness unit is looking like it's in pretty good shape. So instead of in the $2,000 range, that's in the $1,000 range. Uh, Amanda Kozaker, a new librarian, she is working very hard to update our collection and she's also working to add more uh, male-friendly readings, different kinds of uh, opportunities for boys to come to the library and be engaged with, with text. So that uh, library books and periodicals account is up $1,000. Um, we're saving a couple thousand on printing costs, that's because we just said to, for our fifth and sixth grade um, agenda planners, we don't need it to have a tape logo, we don't need it to have this and that, it doesn't need to have a handbook in it. We just want, just give us something that kids can write in. So we've saved quite a bit in that. And then also you might notice in the instructional technology, you'll see something that says it's uh, an increase of $10,000, when actually that's another rearrangement of the furniture. It used to be under a line for uh, GT because we anticipated uh, possible expenses for students maybe getting involved with some John Hopkins work, and that didn't materialize, which is fine. So we've been using that money for instructional technology to provide teachers with site licenses for tools such as ExploreLearning.com, Gizmos, uh, Discovery Education, BrainPop, and other things. So I think that that, uh, you can see the numbers for the classroom at the bottom, the enrollment and staff and projections for next year. Questions for Steve? Uh, uh, Steve, I, I'm kind of surprised, um, maybe it's because of the uh, outside funding we got, to, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but I remember contributing to it, that books and periodicals uh, were only spending $14,000, I think, which is a small increase of 6000 And I remember yes. yep. in going back to 910, we spent 38000 Do you feel comfortable that we are, we are spending enough on updating our books and periodicals? Uh, good question. Thanks for asking that. So we had the text we can where the that parents the name uh, uh, raised, they had a, a pretty good deal for us. If we, uh, they would raise $60,000 in the community, uh, the, the school budget would match that. Because as you might recall, there was uh, the, the youngest book that I had in the collection from five through eight was uh, 12 years old and the oldest was 26 or 27. So, um, you know, we were studying about how you can use electricity for all kinds of modern marvels. Um, we have gone through uh, almost all of our textbooks, and those have been updated. The only section that has not been done is social studies, because they are the last group in the pipeline for the uh, curriculum management plan. Um, they are, are going to be purchasing a resource out of funds that I have this year. There's, there's uh, Pauline, it's something like, I don't know, $13,100 uh, left yes. over in the uh, Text We Can fund that we anticipated using for this. And I'll combine uh, some of the money that's left in that account this year to purchase the textbooks for the eighth grade for next year. So I have money for this that I'll, I can use this year to get those textbooks for next year. I see. So what you're saying is, that even though we're only increasing at about six, because <coughs> excuse me, we're actually increasing enough using the leftover money from text we can to will that take care of the social studies update? Uh, leftover money that'll take care of half the social studies update. The other half, uh, the money from this year will take care of half. The other money will take care of the other half. So by the end of next year, between private sources and in this budget, we will have finally have updated the middle school yes. textbooks. Yes, and we'll be in year two of six-year site licenses for the social studies and the world language pieces. Um, so, you know, in four years, we'll, we'll have to revisit that. Well, that. That's quite a achievement in the last couple of years that's that we've been able to do. Thank you. Thanks. I think Janice Emmerman and other folks were tired of hearing me complain about it. Well, I contributed, yeah. so it worked. Okay. Any other questions for Steve? Mm -hmm.
Uh, uh, Steve, on the uh, what we would call professional development, there's a, a total middle school improvement of instruction. There's a staff development component, and then there's a student assessment. Yes. Yeah. What? Uh, which amount would be for if a teacher wanted to take a professional development class? Is that mainly the staff development? Yes, so um, the, the staff development piece would be used. I, I use a, most of that during the school year as teachers are saying, I'd like the opportunity. There's something that they didn't plan for that becomes available. For instance, there's a, there's a conference on, on response to intervention in Boston. So I'm going to use those funds to pay for that. Typically, the uh, student assessment and curriculum money, that's for, I, I try to reserve that for, mostly for summer curriculum work where teachers have the time to sit down in, uh, in several different groupings and really dive into a subject and, and tear it apart. Okay, so both of those amounts are available for, for teachers for questions. Right? Yes, and, it, and we put out, they put out proposals to, to the office for that, and, and uh, I work with the staff to figure out how we're going to cover those costs. Thank you. Okay, um, for the high school budget, um, I also want to start off by just sort of acknowledging and thanking the board for support um, in a few key ways. Um, and one of the things that some of the board members who were part of the board last year might remember is a significant discussion about cumulative intervention, and that led to the hiring of an academic skills coach, who was Tom Cohan, some of you may know Tom. Um, and he, I think it has been marvelously successful for kids. Um, the poster child for that is a student uh, who's now a junior, a junior boy, who has traditionally struggled with organizational skills, keeping on top of things, very nice young man and worked hard, um, and a bright kid. Um, at the beginning of this year, we assigned him to the intervention team to Tom Cohen, and for the first time in his high school career, he made the honor roll at the end of the first quarter, which was absolutely huge. We then had a learning curve, because he came and said, I loved working with Tom Cohen, but I'd love a little more freedom as well, since I've made the honor roll, can I have my freeze? So we cut him loose cold turkey at his request, and he dipped a little bit, and he is now back, and gladly sort of um, back on back on the course. Um, he's the, I think, the poster child for many success stories that Tom has had, and we've been really prioritizing Tom's work with younger students in particular. That student happened to be a junior, but um, he's been working extensively with ninth and tenth graders, and really successful. Um, the second thing is to mention the board's continued support. Uh, for the Achievement Center and the work that goes on in the Achievement Center. Uh, this past year, heading into the year, um, without any budgetary increase at all, but some creative look at our schedules, um, the math department, math teachers, and the Achievement Center staff were able to figure out a way to get um, a, a math teacher in the Achievement Center every single period. Um, up until then, it had been Elaine Barnell who was in there for one period. We tried to be strategic about the period when we assigned her to the Achievement Center, but this year, for the first time, we have a math teacher in the Achievement Center for every period, so that students who are really, and the math teachers are really using it well, and the students are really benefiting from it, I think. Um, the other thing that I would mention is the continued support for the reading position in the high school. Um, Angela Shapani did a presentation a couple months ago, um, and I think I certainly read that the board was very supportive of that work. I happened to be in an English classroom, uh, ninth grade English classroom the other day, um, observing Erica Blog, who's our, one of our new English teachers, um, and she was introducing her students to um, an essay that they were having to write. But first they had to sort of uh, take some notes from a reading. Um, and one of the students who was actually in Angela's class, or was in Angela's class for a semester, sort of said, why don't we use soapstone? The teacher had never heard of soapstone, but it's a technique that had been developed by the, some of the reader, or Matt might have heard of it, because sometimes it's used in some, it's actually some AP classes. It's a college board developed strategy. It's an uh, acronym. I'm not going to tell you what it's all about. These guys probably could, but um, it's, it's a way to sort of systematically look at some, some, some reading in some really uh, intensive ways. And it was just fascinating that this student just having internalized what they had taught her, <coughs> sort of talked talk the rest of the class and the teacher through this. It was really nice to see the way 
um, students are internalizing some of that work. Um, so those are some of the highlights. Um, I will say that in, in a nutshell, my budget is really simple. Uh, for the past few years, um, we have held off on some text and equipment increases. Um, and we have been able to get away with that and still what we need to do what we need to do. Uh, but we've had some equipment um, damage just in the normal course of events. Um, and we have some things that we need to replace. Um, and we have some textbooks that, are, that have gotten pretty uh, old, not quite as old as the one Steve was, ta Steve was talking about in the high school. We've got a few that are, that are close. Um, so this year, what basically the budget represents is a trade-off, a reduction in supplies and software and some other accounts uh, and to allow us for this year to catch up on some of the text and equipment purchases that we really need to do to just replace things. Um, the trade-off is masked a little bit because it looks like um, in the budget line of supplies that it's a significant increase, but again, that's because of the AR or the game line. We're actually using less money for supplies next year we're projecting than uh, we did this year. Um, so that, that is kind of lost a little bit in the lines because of the AR, AR money. But our bottom line is non-salary, as Ken mentioned. Um, our non-salary lines all totaled last year were $362,894 for the high school. And next year, what I'm proposing for the high school is $362,894. That's Questions for Jeff? Um, I, have, I have a question for Jeff. Um, quickly, you're, you're trying to replace three texts, Spanish 3, Poetry, and FST? Correct. Yet, if, again, reading this if, as well as, but you're only increasing your books and periodicals by 4,600 bucks. Well, part of it is, I mean, we, we, we did not go through years and years of squeezed textbook purchases in the past, so that we start off with a higher baseline than the middle school has. So part of it is um, shifting some money from some one department to another, and part of it is the total net increase as well. So that's why it doesn't look quite as large. That difference is certainly not going to pay for all those texts. We're doing some shifting. With okay. The as well. Then I was wondering how you managed to get that, that would be kind of price part. <laughs> um, I have another question. It interrelates three things that I think is important for the public to understand. This period of intervention that you're talking about is, I think, somewhat connected to the three school-wide assessments where you're trying to assess people's reading, writing, and research skills. Okay. I, I thought you mentioned that you're trying to identify people coming in, where the weakness is, and then through the period of intervention, achievement center, and at least right now, math teachers uh, address every, whether they're B students, A students, C students, D students, address their shortfalls. Do I have this essentially correct? You got it exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I think people should understand that the, 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 right now, the, the, this is being done in combination with the Achievement Center, but the math department has stepped up and are contributing one free period that they normally would have had. Uh, a week to be able to do this, and they're doing it for no additional money. Is that correct? That's right. Is the what about the other departments, like the English department? Or the English department. Uh, the, the need was not quite the same because uh, you, you might remember that historically, since the inception of the achievement center, it has been a full-time English teacher in okay. the in the achievement center. We did coming into this year actually instead of having Lisa Melanson, who was here earlier, in the achievement center all day. What we have done is we've shifted so that Lisa is actually teaching two classes this year and some of the other English teachers are stepping in uh, to, to, to fill some of the periods when, when Lisa has in the past. Um, and they're being relieved of one of the, one of the classes that they were going to otherwise talk. So um, we are continuing, when it comes to English, to have a full-time presence in the Achievement Center, which has always been very beneficial. We're doing it in a slightly different way. So, that it, so it doesn't reflect as a cost increase anyway. Okay. Well, what I'm actually trying to do is highlight for the public that this, what I think is a great program of catching everybody, whether A students or D students, and improving them, and, and we're doing it at least in math for free. 
Yeah, I mean, what happened in the beginning of the year, to, to, to make that very real, is that the math department did um, administer a, a common assessment to every single kid in math.